Hey, que la que hay, mi amigo. Rocky here from SpeakSpanishFaster.com. And recently we had a question from one of our students here on YouTube. And the question, it comes from KMO325. Speak Spanish faster. I was just wondering if you can make more videos on Caribbean dialect Spanish. I understand that it is the hardest dialect to comprehend for learners from the United States, but I listen to a lot of musica tropical, but I still can't understand what is being sung. I've never been good at using music, movie, television to learn Spanish. Great question. In fact, this is one of my favorite topics when it comes to speaking Spanish because I am Puerto Rican, I have Dominican cousins, and I used to live in the Dominican Republic. So I have a lot of experience with Caribbean Spanish, more experience than I have with any other Spanish. Um, so in today's video, I want to break down some key things about Caribbean Spanish um, that can help anybody out that wants to learn Caribbean Spanish or is going to a Caribbean country. So first off, when we're talking about Caribbean Spanish, what exactly are we talking about? Um, in general, we are talking about Puerto Rico, the Dominican Republic, and Cuba. Now, there are some um, kind of Central American countries maybe, but South American countries that have coasts. Like, for instance, when I went to Colombia, they had um, Cartagena was on the coast, and their Spanish was kind of similar to a Caribbean Spanish. But in general, when we talk about Caribbean Spanish, we are talking about Puerto Rican Spanish, Dominican Spanish, and Cuban Spanish. Now, I will be upfront and say that I don't have that much experience with Cuban Spanish um, besides a few movies here and there, but from what I can tell, it's very similar to um, Spanish in the Dominican Republic. I'm sure they have some of their own words and stuff that I don't know, um, and they might have their own little dialect, but from all the Cubans I've heard, whether it's just been on YouTube or, or um, I think I've met maybe like two or three Cubans in my lifetime, their Spanish is very similar. Uh, it's quote unquote Caribbean Spanish. And it's easy, you know, for like a Puerto Rican or a Dominican to converse with a Cuban rather than someone, say, someone from Spain or something. So again, we're going to be talking in generals here because you have to remember that, yes, there is Caribbean Spanish, but Puerto Rico talks different than the Dominican Republic and they both talk different than um, Cuba. All right, so that's one thing to remember. So we will have to speak more in generals here. And then remember within each country, they have their own dialects based on the area that people are living in. So for example, when I was in the Dominican Republic, I was living in Santiago. Uh, and they call them Cibaeños and Cibaeños talk con la I. So instead of the R's, they implement an I. And, you know, Puerto Rico... We implement L's, so instead of the R, we implement the L. And they do that also in like Santo Domingo, they implement the L. So that just goes to show you in San Santo Domingo and Santiago, they have different types of Spanish and they're within the same country being the Dominican Republic. All right, so the first thing I'm going to mention, I'll get to the L thing in a second because that's kind of confusing. So first I start with the letter S. It doesn't exist. Yeah, in Caribbean Spanish, the S pretty much doesn't exist. We don't say them. Unless, of course, if a word starts with an S, we start it um, like sueño, of course, the S exists. But within a word, if there's an S, like let's say um, las playas, the beaches, we would say la playa. So we would say it just like a singular, la playa. Las mujeres, la mujere. So that kind of helps you, los hombres, lo hombre. So that's how we use the plural. We just don't say the S. We also don't say the D's. So instead of verdad, we would say verdad. That's how we would say it. We don't say the D's. All right. So again, verdad, verdad. Now we also, a lot of us exchange the R for the L. So I know we do this in Puerto Rico and many parts of the Dominican Republic. We do this. Um, and I'm not sure in Cuba, but I'm sure they do something similar. So this word, verdad, would sound like belda instead of verdad, belda. So you can see that it changed a lot. And that's why people have trouble understanding Caribbean Spanish. Another thing we really like to do is put words together. So let's say instead of saying voy a hablar, I would say voy. So instead of voy a, I say voy. In some parts of the Dominican Republic, 
in the Dominican Republic, they actually say gua. So yo gua hablar. All right. So voa gua. And I would just get accustomed to the voa. I, say, I, I think more people say voa. So instead of voy a hablar, voa hablar. All right, voa. So they just do that because they talk really fast. No, yo voy a hablar contigo. So that's how it, it would sound. And they put it together. All right. Um, and now, again, we could take that sentence and we will add the L. So instead of saying yo voy a hablar contigo in Caribbean Spanish, it might sound like yo voy a hablar contigo. Yo voy a hablar contigo. So it sounds much different than yo voy a hablar contigo. Yo voy a hablar contigo. Sounds, it sounds different. So you have to be a, to, in order to understand Caribbean Spanish, you have to get used to hearing these things. For instance, instead of the word puerta, we say puerta because we add the L, right? Puerta. So abre, abreme la puerta. That's how I would say it. And again, if you're not accustomed, if you don't know that the L's exist, you'll say, what is puerta? I never heard that word, but it's just puerta. But we're just implementing the L instead of the R. So again, that's why it can be very confusing. Now, one thing they do in the Dominican Republic is they even remove the L's. So instead of, um, let's let's use a sentence like, voy a pasar. Voy a pasar. They'll say, voy a pasar. So they completely just remove everything from the end. So they will say, voy a pasar. So let's take a phrase and let's kind of dissect it, all right? So... Let's take the sentence, voy a pasar por ahí para buscarte. So I'm going to pass over there or I'm going to pass by there to pick you up. All right, voy a pasar por ahí para buscarte. Now, if it's in Puerto Rican Spanish, it might sound like, oye, voy a pasar por ahí para buscarte. All right, or voy a pasar por, por ahí para buscarte. So we'll, we'll remove the para, we'll say pa, voy a pasar por ahí para buscarte. All right, so boom. That's how it might sound in Puerto Rican Spanish. But then you might hear Dominicans say, Oye, voy a pasar por ahí pa buscarte. Pa buscarte. Look, they cut the L, they, just like that. So this is why it can get very, very difficult. And then, of course, you have your slang. All right, um, slang words, they exist in every country. And I do not know all the slang for Puerto Rico, I don't know all the slang for Dominican Republic, I don't know all the slang for Cuba, I don't even know all the slang that is used in the United States of America. So it could just goes to show you that, you know, it's going to be difficult if you try to remember or know all the slang, but some common slang that exists around all the Caribbean countries is um, one, the word guagua, and we say that for a truck or a bus. So um, if like I say, if I ask somebody, are you going to take the bus, I might say, Oh yeah, vas a coger la guagua? And that's how I would say it. And I have a funny story. I remember um, back in high school, I was at a restaurant and across the street was a store called Wawa. All right. And, and that's like a convenience store. If you never heard of Wawa, it's my favorite convenience store. But I was there with one of my friends and she was El Salvadorian. So she don't know the word guagua. She don't know what that is. And me and my cousin were there and, um, and a truck passed. And he was like, yo, Minnesota Wawaii. And she was like, Wawaii, what? Like, she had no idea. And she started laughing. It's like, how do you say it? She was like, oh, troca. Now, I don't even think troca is a word, but that's like El Salvadorian. That's how she said it. Um, but we said la guagua. So that's one word. La guagua could be used for the bus or truck. Now, another word, um, jeva. Jeva is like chica, mujer, um, girl. Or woman, you could say la jeva. Esa es la jeva mía. Like, that's my girl right there. Um, so jeva is a word that is used a lot in Caribbean Spanish. Another word is dale. So dale can be, we, we know like dale really means give them that or give him that or give him, you know, dale. But what we use it for is like, okay. So you could say See, sí, está bien. But for instance, like if I'm on the phone or something and I tell my cousin, yo voy a pasar por ahí para buscarte como a las seis. And then he could say, dale. That means like, okay, like go for it, you know? So um, that's another word that you'll hear a lot, dale, the word dale. So remember, just kind of remember some of these 
things. Oh, one more quick thing is we'll also cut out the ES for the words like estar. So instead of saying como estas, you might hear como tu ta. Como tu ta, how are you? Donde tu ta, where are you? Um, and that's another thing that I want to add really quick is the use of the structure of sentences. So what you'll learn in school is probably the correct way to say it is donde estas tu? Where are you? That's how you would say it and you have the, the tu at the end. De donde eres tu? But in Caribbean Spanish, we like to mix it up. So um, we like to do it more for English where you have the main word kind of in the middle. Like, where are you from? So, de donde tu eres? Como tu ta? Como tu estas? That's what I'm saying. Como tu ta? De donde tu eres? So really quick, let's wrap it up. Some things to remember. No S's. No D's. You know, in general. Um, implementing the L for the R, for the most part, again, in the Dominican Republic, in the northern part, they speak with the I. So instead of saying hablar, they'll say hablai. And I remember I was playing basketball there, and it was like, oh, you're loco, vamos jugar, vamos jugar. So they said, you know, let's play. But instead of, I would say, vamos a jugar, they say, vamos a jugar. So again, it can be confusing, you know. So just what I, some recommendations I would say is, Continue to listen to a lot of, um, if you haven't yet, I've recommended on this channel before, but listen to like trap Spanish music. Because if you listen to like bachata and stuff, which I love bachata, and they speak perfect Spanish there, but you don't really get to hear the street type of Spanish that's being spoke, um, that's being spoken on a daily basis by everybody. So the trap Spanish, you'll kind of hear the rapping version. You'll hear more of the L's and the cutting of the S's and stuff like that. So listen to some of that. Um, just go on YouTube, watch some movies. Like if you want to hear Puerto Rican Spanish, watch, uh, Talento de Barrio, which is the movie by Daddy Yankee. You could watch that on YouTube. Um, and that's just a straight Puerto Rican movie. So if you want to learn Puerto Rican Spanish, Dominican Spanish, try to watch a movie like Sanky Panky. It's a funny movie. Um, but it's real Dominican and I'm not sure for Cuba. But I'm sure like what I would do if I want to learn Cuban Spanish, some things I did like just to prepare for this video to see if, if I could kind of tell some things about the accent. Like I watched an interview with um, Puig that plays, I don't know what team he plays on right now in the major leagues, but Yasiel Puig, he's, he's from Cuba. So I watched some interviews with him and just listened to how he spoke Spanish and it sounded pretty much like Dominican Spanish for the most part. So um, do things like that and be creative with your learning. The beauty is we have the internet now. I didn't have that when I was growing up, um, but you have that now and there's a lot of resources you can use to continue to hear the Spanish and learn Spanish. And of course, of course, you know, that leads to my slight little pitch. If you wanna speak Spanish faster and become conversationally fluent, then definitely check out our free Loss in Translation training. And we even have courses on our website, um, speakspanishfaster.com. If you enjoyed the video, do me a big favor, hit the thumbs up for me, comment below, let me know what else you want me to talk about, anything else. As you can see, I do videos on questions you guys ask me so I can help you improve. So if you have a question, please ask me in the comments of any video and I'll try to get a video on it. The more questions you have, the more content I can create. So hey, it's a win-win for everybody. Last but not least, please do not forget to subscribe to our channel, turn on notifications so you never miss another video. Until next time, I'll see you then.